Okay, it's uh, 6 05 p.m. I'd like to call on this evening's meeting of the Charter Commission to order and ask that we join the name of pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Let's see. Um, do we have any public comments? We have no public. Do we have any minutes? Yes, we do. I sent you by email, and I'm not sure whether you didn't get that for some reason. I sent that today, all the minutes except. Hold on. I, unfortunately, I was at medical appointments this afternoon yeah. and didn't have a chance. Okay. So the group that I sent to, and the first one was also sent at the last meeting. This was the draft minutes for the meeting on Wednesday, February 2nd. And the second set of documents that was sent was the summary of the comments at the public hearing that was held on January 26th. I'm sorry, I did that in backwards order there, but there are still pending minutes from the 16th of February. Okay. Not here. But these two, <coughs> the second, did not approve the last second time. I think we did approve the last time. I did time. not get approval of that last time. I'm pretty sure that we did. Okay. All right. Um, I can amend the minutes to that effect. And, and anyone but me remember that? I have no objection to accepting them. I just don't know that. Well, we can just go ahead and approve them. Yeah. Okay. So did everybody get the comments? So these are just summaries of the public comments. And I should, and I sent them by email early today, fairly early today. And I should, I put a note up at the top. I was taking notes remotely. It is difficult to do that and difficult to do it accurately. So just the request to please, please win any if you see an error. By all means, please let me know because it's just that I couldn't necessarily hear well. Um, if it's okay with you, I'd like to have a chance to read through those. I don't yeah, I would also. Well. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the ones from the second, uh -huh. uh, you could certainly entertain a motion to uh, adopt or re adopt or whatever those. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I was going to ask for a little more time on the big one. Okay. So a well, motion to approve the meeting the minutes for February 2nd. I so move. Second. Don't you need? Thank you. Oh, sorry. You just did. <laughs> <laughs> and this is for February 2nd, right? Yes. February 2nd. <clears throat> Any discussion? I can't open the documents, so. Okay, now what am I doing to make that impossible for you? You're sending them out as an ODT as opposed to a. I can give you a PDF. Yeah, I'm sorry about or that. A PDF will work. Yeah, I'm making a note. I'll give you a minute. Mm -hmm. Yes, and actually, with regard, just a little mm -hmm. mental note, with regard to the summaries from January 26th, I, I had a question that I have fixed on my own private copy, but I haven't yet fixed here, which is that uh, Peter was, oh, maybe I did fix it here. Peter was present for that meeting. For some reason, I didn't have him noted as present. I probably couldn't see him as present, but nevertheless, he was present, and that is, that is a correction I made. I actually have another question while we're waiting for reading to occur. Um, I have a gentleman, it's Jim Byrne or Jim Bynes. Byrne, okay, so that was incorrect on the earlier version, and I will leave him as Jim Byrne for future. Yeah, there's a couple of uh, last name corrections. I, would, I can send them to you. I would be so grateful to get them. That would be terrifically helpful. <clears throat> that was on the public hearing. The public January hearing. 26. Yeah, January 26. Yes. Yeah. All right. Um, we have first, second. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Ed, are you in favor? Ed? He's on mute. Can you hear now? No. Ed said, if you're talking, I can't hear you. That was a while ago. 
Yes, I, I did. Uh, I, my vote was yes. I thought I did my thing to do it. Okay, thank you. <laughs> If you, Jeanette, if you can give me Denise's phone number, I'll call her real quick to sure. try to get in because yeah. I can't take my computer off this. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. PDF or a Word document or almost yeah. anything except the OES. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll send PDFs. I can send Word, um, but I'll send PDFs because it's yeah. getting easier and more universal. I apologize. Oh. I think you may have mentioned that before, but it takes a little while to get to my head. While uh, we wait for Mark yeah. to get back to the next topic, yeah, he's so, trying to put the um, Did we want to? Are we going to do anything on the 16th, or we have not gotten it? I'm so sorry, I don't have those. Problems. <coughs> oh, although I am going to get those catch up within the next week, I'm going to get us caught up. I do not like being behind like this. I will get us caught up within a week. When we get there, I will be abstaining on that one because I wasn't here. My grandmother was discharged mm -hmm. from the hospital when I was quadruple booked that way. So oh, she's doing better. Right. Oh, that's in, a little tough. In a better place. Still a little ways to go, but after we're going to be passed just before Christmas, it's been a better oh. the last few months. So, what is the shame? All right. I'm sorry to hear that. Now, She's in the middle of another phone call, but she will um, log in when she can and I'll elevate her so she's all set. Okay, approval of minutes has been done. Charter issues, status of review. Mark, again, with my very public apology that it took me so long to get the summary put together and get it to you. And I did not expect you to drop everything. In. I was hoping to knock a few off before tonight, but unfortunately we've had a couple of things happen and didn't get to them yet. Um, but I will jump on it now. Yeah, so that seems, that seems okay to me too, really, because we had some, we did have some comments that came in that I scrounged from the public comments that it, we had received in December and in January, that in inelegant form, unlike Pam's beautiful writing, in inelegant form, I just added a link here. Um, did you get that one, Peter? Yes, that one was in work. Okay, good. Yeah, that was in Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I will turn it over then, the inclusion of citizen recommendations. Jeanette, if you want to, I'm just glancing at some of these. It yeah. looks like a lot of them are really kind of either duplicates of things that, that are here or. Um, should we go through and discuss each one of these? Oh, yeah. Since, okay, say, since the group voted on the other items. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, don't item item. So, I don't think there are quite duplicates. At least I tried to avoid duplicates, and I might not have done that completely. But um, so, and these are in no order at all. They're actually in the order in which I found them in the summaries from the December meeting and the January meeting. So, in basically, not much of any order at all. But if you look at the blue text, so under town meeting number <coughs> five, there was a comment related to a charter as to whether there's any way to avoid what was called the tyranny of the small group. And we're all familiar with this phenomenon where a small group or a medium-sized group comes in and just dominates the vote at a certain level. I don't know if there's an answer to that question, but I'm just noting it because it was brought up. So. I don't think there is an answer to that. I mean, that's the. That's the method of town meeting. Vote by number. Yeah, so I agree. There's no, no way you can stop a group from coming into any meeting, coming in, petitioning the board of selectmen or going to town meeting. And, you know, Dominating what's, what's what 
the um, discussion is about. And, and truthfully, on top of that, I think the best way to avoid the tyranny in the small group is to show up. If you're upset with the idea of whoever the, you know, people coming in, the best way to do that is to get more bodies and seats to be able to contest it. I think there's an old Ben Franklin quote where democracy is a well-armed sheep contesting the vote against two wolves on what to have for dinner. I mean, truthfully, that's the... I think that's the way you avoid the tyranny of minorities encourage people to participate. If they don't, that kind of leaves it up to those who are there to make those decisions. I'd also like to make a comment on the list at this point, which I emailed earlier, which was that I thought this list was going to be a list of legal questions, what we can and cannot do with the charter. And some of these are philosophical questions, and some of them are administration questions. And so the list is getting a little out of hand, in my opinion. Uh, and that doesn't mean to say we don't make multiple lists, but the list for the task at hand and what's marked supposed to be researching is supposed to be legal questions related to what can be done with the charter, what doesn't have to be done with the charter, and to inform our decision going forward, will we be writing a charter? So I just wanted to make the comment that I feel the list is a bit out of hand at this point. <clears throat> I, I guess that's um, kind of what I was... oh, That's Denise, because I forwarded her the link. <laughs> <laughs> As if by magic. Yeah. I thought you wanted two votes or something. I didn't realize the lips were specific to people. <laughs> This was a pretty vivid quote, but I too am not sure that I see any practical way to address it in the charter. And so perhaps, although we can respect the fact that the comment was made, I think perhaps we do need to set that one aside. So, okay. And make it easier to vote at and participate in town meeting. Yes. And that was a comment that came in multiple times from both people who agreed that town meeting should remain and people who did not. <laughs> I mean, that was a comment that was made many times. I don't know if it's possible. I'm just saying quite a few people mentioned it. Does that relate to number to letter C though? That's, That's yeah, I think. Yeah. Um, actually not, I mean, for example, one question, not not only. Um, one question people ask. Yeah, the welfare. That's not a remote participation. That's an absentee ballot. The town meeting was one of the questions raised. Um, yeah, that's a good. Yeah. Um, I don't think so. Because um, you can't articles at the town meeting the way it's set up, especially the all of the um, financial articles can be amended at town meeting. So if you vote absentee on right. one number and it gets amended mm -hmm. at the town meeting, mm -hmm. do you throw out the absentee mm -hmm. votes? Good question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean. Um, now, it is possible for the selectmen to vote in um, more articles that cannot be amended at town meeting. But that's sort of like does away with the purpose of town meeting. Yeah, kind of does, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Huh. So I think the make it easier to participate in town meeting is what this whole thing is about. I mean, that's kind of like what the yeah. summary here said. Are there ways it can be used to make government more accessible um, to the public and by <clears throat> encouraging better communication? So, <laughs> I think that's kind of a little redundant to what the whole thing is. Same with I and J. Yeah. 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 Um, also, not necessarily questions we need legal opinions on. Um, so the question was raised by the public. Um, is there a way to amend the warrant at the town meeting or even before the town meeting? I mean, in other words, um, the, I think the question was, What's in front of us is fixed. Is there any way to change that? And that kind of related to the question of meetings prior to the um, town meeting itself to understand what was on the warrant. Well, so there's sort of an effort to 
That's where this require an information session. That is very much that like that. Yes. Informational mm -hmm. more content. But I don't know that informational meeting idea, which also absolutely was mentioned. Um, I don't know whether uh, it, with, the, with the addition of informational meeting, even at that point, could the warrant be changed? Let's say an informational meeting was held one month in advance. Could the warrant be changed based on that discussion? I really don't no. know. I, and I, that's it. Whoever, I think there were three of us. So okay. I, I think that we want to be very careful. Part of the reason that the warrant is set up the way it is, is you need to notify, advise, and warn the inhabitants of the town of the business that's going to be transacted. So if the warrant is then changing and there's a huge, if those changes kind of occurred and you could do it on the fly, I'm concerned that that kind of puts us back into the tyranny of a small group kind of bit more so than there is a process where you can petition to get articles included either at a special town meeting. We talked about that, I think, two meetings ago or at the next town meeting whenever. So I think those processes do exist out there. But if we get too far into the how can you amend a warrant on the, I mean, really the best thing is to have another town meeting with that other business versus, at least to me, because you want to make sure everyone's operating with it. <clears throat> Same set of facts going into a meeting. It has his hand or had his up to him. Oh, Ed. I listened to all the conversation about how we can have people come to town meeting or you know remotely, or should we do this and that? And really, I think the whole point behind us say sticking with town meeting is because we argued that we like the people coming to town meeting. Uh, I think if people really want town meeting. It's once a year, they can make it a, a date to come here. Uh, also, the, uh, the talk about the, the uh, warrant articles and everything, I mean, we, we actually go through a, quite a process through all our budgeting process. We have public hearings. Uh, I think if we have a negative, it's more getting the word out to the public. I don't think that has anything to do with the charter. It just means we need to get a better information uh, better information board, for instance, out front of the town hall. Uh, so, so some of those on the list can be dealt with just by taking care of those type of issues. But we can't really town meeting. If we're going to keep town meeting, we still have certain rules we have to follow, uh, and that is that you know you can't bring certain things up at town meeting because it hasn't had a public hearing. You know, you can only adjust monetary numbers. So, I mean. To be able to have even even have a time for people to talk at town meeting doesn't do any good if you can't ad address anything we're talking about. That's what the select board is for. They come to the select board and they can address their issues with the select board. And if the board is listening, then they will bring these things to town meeting for a proper public hearing and town meeting. Just my input. Sorry. Thank you. Also, like um, just glancing, I don't know if we want really want to fix the location of the town meeting in your charter because then it's, it's there. Yeah, you, you sure. really need to maintain some flexibility. Yeah, well, but you know, we said to the public, any idea is yeah. welcome. We'll take a look. You know, and right. so people did that, and yeah. I don't think we should fault that. We we did not say we did not put limits on their comments, and I don't think we nope. should have. And so you know. I mean, my comment was just that that's yeah. not something may not be suitable. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Different list. And um, the, the fixed schedule of town meeting, in other words, announce it in advance so everybody knows when it's happening. You know, the comment was brought up that sometimes town meeting conflicts with school events. If the town meeting date was fixed, the school could adjust their meetings, you know. So if everybody knew what it was, that might be helpful and also improve the advertising, which is a point that Ed has made. So those comments were some that were made. I wonder if there's anything in those blue comments that we need to add to the black comments that Pam had already written. Um, let me just get Karen's thoughts. Yes. And then... In regards to a fixed schedule, town meeting is the third Wednesday of May every single year. Yeah. And it, whether it conflicts with the school schedule or not, then that's the school department's issue to schedule things around town meeting. I don't buy into people being busy. <clears throat> I have been at town meeting when I've had infants. I've, I've, we've been extremely busy with baseball. 
we have always made a point to be at town meeting because it's important to us. I could look at the calendar today and tell you when town meeting is next year. Well, but there, uh, you, you certainly have a valid point, but town meeting has been moved. Well, I mean, to that, that's why in relationship to major that events, was the like pandemic. A pandemic. I mean, we have but to also in relation to other things that are not <clears throat> as major. That, in other words, it isn't always quite on that date. I know it's anticipated to be. Do you really think that people who are interested in going to town meeting can't figure out whether we're going to be at the Orion or we're going to be at the high school or we're in a pandemic and we're going to be at the fairgrounds? I think that's a little far reaching that if they're putting in any effort, they can read the warrant. It tells you where it's at. Well, you know, it's not my <clears throat> comment. It was a comment from one or two or three or four members of the public. So your argument is with them, not with me. And so you can make that case that that is unreasonable, that the comments that we receive are unreasonable and invalid in your view. Yeah, that's a valid comment to have. One thing here I think that is very valid that in some ways when you set forth, if you set forth in the charter your requirements for the town of meeting, how often, how far before the meeting do you have to advertise? You don't have to follow the state as long as it's more uh, and not less than state regulation. So, um, you know, you can be very specific when you write your um, your charter, you must have this by such and such a date. Um, it must be advertised in such and such. You know, you can spell all of that out mm -hmm. to make it to put an exclamation point and, like mm -hmm. I say, possibly require it to be presented to the public sooner than it. Yeah, I mean, that certainly seems to sort of respond to some of these comments. I think that's a pretty good idea, at least to put it on the list of discussion. Uh, also, though, also, make sure that not only do we do it in a, ahead of time, but a continuum until that date. So so we don't have it just sent out, um, you know, two weeks ahead of town meeting, but have something in your face at town hall for you to see every day. The date of the subsequent um, town meeting in May is, you know, for the following May, is set at the town meeting. Every, at the end of, of every town meeting, they set the date for the next town meeting. And we, in, in the past, we tried to change it from Wednesday evening to like Saturday, and it got voted down every time. They wanted to have it Wednesday evening, and they said it. So in town meeting in May of this year, they will set the town meeting for next May. So people got a whole year to put it on the calendar. And the school should know that it's on the calendar because it's in their building. I, I think that we do have a problem with attendance at town meeting, however. So clearly not everything the way it's always been done is necessarily um the best so the question is what you know does this group have the possibility to create something better i did find out that we currently have a committee a town meeting committee but there's no one on it and so why is that it's an ad hoc committee, not a standing committee. Um, does anybody even, I didn't know it was there. My guess is most people don't know it's there. And I also think that that this one thing that we've done in the past as a town is send out a notice and assume that that's enough. And we know from educational research that people have to see things three times before they remember them or more than three times. So I think that, you know, there are some things to consider here that could make some improvements to the way we handle things. And I don't think just saying that this is the way we've always done it and everybody should know 
is an is a reasonable answer to uh, to to whether to a problem that we do have as a town of between eight and nine thousand people. But are these charter worthy? I guess that's you know. That's the point. Well, I was just going to suggest maybe we create that second list that Marilyn was talking about. Is like, this is our. Does it have to have, to have a charter? And these are are these the things that we think that could be improved in the town and right. that could be worked in later if, if we decide to go that way. I think thing. that's that's a great point. <clears throat> um, the only thing to keep in mind with that is some of the things that you don't have to have a charter for, you may still want to include in a charter to make them more right. Well, Which is why you keep that second list there so that if we created one, we could potentially incorporate improvements. Or we could just create a list and hand it over to the select board and say these are some things that we thought about. Yeah, we you're quite right. Although if that was done exactly that wow. in 2008. And we don't have so much authority though. Oh gosh, but there's no all of the people that are on this current select board were not on when that was handed in. That was an ornery select board. And, and there's nobody that's on the board currently that was during, there during that time, which is why the comment from last week of no one's taken the lead was because there's nobody on the board that was there when it was handed in. Um, I do have a question. Uh, Denise mentioned that this is a real committee. I mean, that's my question. Is it a real committee? Yeah. Like, I mean, because that, that page that purports to show committee committees and open seats, that page is like completely, you can't rely on it. <clears throat> so is it a real committee? That's my question. I mean, if somebody applied to be on it, would they get it? So, so someone applied to be on it, uh, the contact rose, uh, they fill out the one page yeah, application yeah. of the committee, yeah. and then should set up an interview with the board of selectmen, they usually do them uh, before the select board meeting. Right. And they get appointed. Well, but I mean, I'm just asking for confirmation because so often it happens that you walk yourself through that process and then after you've been invited to come in for, you're told that there really isn't a position or there really isn't a committee. And so that was my question. Is there really a committee? I know it's on the I website. guess to respond to that, because this is that like a yes? This, it is a yes, it's okay. a real committee. Okay. Um, and then the more elaborate answer is when this was brought up back in, I think, January, I talked to Rose and I said, Rose, what about that list we have on the website? So yeah. And she says, to the best of my knowledge, it's accurate. She says, now what sometimes happens yeah. is maybe someone left the Conservation Commission mm -hmm. and Rod forgot to tell her or the right. committee chair hasn't told her that someone's left and it's now a space. Right. Um, but she made enough after that meeting, she went out again to department heads and she said, hey, are there any vacancies that are on your committees? Let me know. And she's so should be 100% accurate today. Yeah, and I think that is the problem that has occurred in the past. I think, I think you're absolutely correct. About that. That's, a, I think, that's I heard before, yeah. okay, I think so also, I'm sorry. I think also you'll find that probably when that committee was formed, there was an active committee. They did try a lot of the same things that are still brought up even today, the babysitting, the change of days, the everything else. And in all honesty, they've tried them all. It didn't do anything. The people lost interest. That's why I think there's nobody on that committee now. I, I do I do think that I like Matt's approach of us having two separate lists because I would like to prioritize on the list that's going to the lawyers. Do we need a charter for X, Y, Z? And if we then decide we want to pursue a charter based on those answers, these are other great things to include. I just want to make sure that from where I sit and my approach on how I view my role as a charter commissioner, I don't want to overstep my bounds and authority if we are not, if we end up in a spot where we don't choose to go for a charter. So I'm for including these on a separate list and I'm all for having discussions about them, but I hope that the list that we're getting to Mark spells out what we need for him to research and then legal if Mark doesn't have the answer. I actually sent out my list for everyone to make comments on. I didn't get any comments back so, except for me except for you yes and so i went ahead and sent it yes. on to mark the for example there are some things in here like legally there will be questions can you take a job vote at a town meeting i don't think you can but that's something we would take to the attorney some of these that are in here um 
the answer might be yes, you need uh, you need a charter, but you need to be sure to do this or this. In other words, I don't want to completely limit the information that we're getting. If we can get some things that are, might be valuable suggestions for how you accomplish some of these things. And, and I'm, I don't want to limit information at all. I just think, again, some of the items in blue, which again, I, I'm glad and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm glad citizens engaged and offered yep. those thoughts. It's our job to kind of synthesize through those and see which ones we're going to approach and tackle. I'm all for more information. I just don't want to send some of those blue questions on down that really, at this point, we don't need to go down that rabbit hole. So I think the summary that um, I think Pam was suggesting was essentially for these FGHIJ, for these blue items, to ask the question whether a charter may fix the date by which a warrant must be out assuming that it is earlier than the date required by the state, and whether a continuum of advertising can be advocated for in a chart. You can, you can put anything that you, any requirements that you want in the chart. So if it's an issue that you really feel putting those requirements, making them mandatory, would help address like improving communications or whatever, then Put it in the charter if you have a charter. Um, yeah, I'm looking at the FGHI. Um, you were absolutely uh, making comments at a select board meeting is probably something that needs to be done internally, I would think, rather than by charter. But issues for uh, applying and accepting grants short of giving the, um, changing the form of government somewhat to give the selectmen um, powers to enact ordinances, take that out of the hand of town meeting. That's, that's a change in the form of government. So, and we had decided we weren't gonna do that. Well, actually, I think there are two strains of thought, and I don't, I don't have truth by the tail on this. One is that um, the government review, governance review committee apparently had the information that there was some kind of an issue that grants could not be quickly accepted. The chair of the select board came by and said, "No, no, incorrect. It can be done." I'm not sure what's. We correct. can because what it is is there's an article in the town meeting warrant that gives them permission to accept grants and apply for grants. Except for CBD review. Don't you have to actually. Yeah, that may be good for that one, but in general, they can. In general, you put it in there, but the ones that they were specifically referring to as CBD review. And um, one time in a town meeting uh, that I was at, um, there was an article we had gotten $150,000 CBD grant to extend water down one of our roads. But we had to have a special town meeting to approve it, accepting it. And um, we had two families in town that were basically the Hatfields and the McCoys. And the Hatfields were really afraid that the McCoys, who had a business, the same business, were going to have access to the water and they wouldn't. And they stacked the house. I mean, they stacked the house. What's so, that? huh? What town was it? So, those things can happen at a town meeting. Just, you know. <laughs> so, when you get into the ordinances with the CDBG, that one, I think you'd have to give them. Uh, legislative power, which is a change in government. So does anybody know whether that's because this, the federal government with CDBG requires? I mean, maybe that's a requirement of the federal government. I, I know there's some, like for instance, some of our TIFs, they have to go in front of the legislative body. Right? Yeah, I mean, so I'm just wondering if that might be a federal I, I think it's probably required that grants on that to go in front of the legislative body. Right. I mean, yeah. Yes. So, okay. So, okay, it sounds like most grants can be accepted by the select board in an expeditious way, but there are some grants, perhaps by law, cannot. They have to go before the legislative body. 
Is that something we should have on consider the possibility of putting on a charter? If you want to make the select board the legislative body, ah. you are changing the form of government. Yeah, that's true. To a high group. I I'm well, open to discuss that. They thought that they could have a in a one week have a town yeah. meeting if they had to. So I just um I think we had decided that we weren't going to visit a change in the form of town government. And that's what we would have to do for them. Wicked Joe, as we did a couple of years ago at a town meeting for their community development, the block grant. And um it's so it's so long in the works, really, you can almost don't even have to have a special town meeting. You know, these things take so long to get all worked out. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like it was waiting for a town meeting. Um, term limits for select board members seems to me didn't been there. Didn't what what well. did we decide about that? Uh, Thompson tried that. Yeah. Really? We we actually instituted term term limits and um then the town changed it and did away with them. I think term limits overall are problematic. Uh, I think there is something to be said for rotating leadership of the of the select board. Term limits limit the um, well, I would call it legislative history, but it's not legislative history for the select board, but they but they limit the memory that people had have of issues that have been revisited before issues um, familiarity with issues that face the town familiarity with um, the people who work for the town in certain capacities. I, I I'm not a fan of term limits, um, but I do think rotating leadership amongst those who are elected to the board is a good idea. Um, perhaps that we could I think, think you about. Put it in the charter. That's something that you it is, it is something that they vote on every single year. Yeah. I mean, so it, it is. <clears throat> it might be a, not a bad idea to consider. You could ask if you need a charter to institute that, or if that's something the town could just vote on. Again, it depends on how emphatic you want to be that it happened. If you don't have it in the charter, then they can just, they don't have to do it. I think. I think that as long as it complies with worth, state law. Worth considering. I, I don't feel like I know the answer to that, but I feel like that's worth considering. That's an interesting <clears> idea. <throat> we will add that in there. Rules of conduct for member of the public and select boards of public meetings. That's definitely, I think, Mark, correct me. Yeah. That would be policy. That would be charter. Planning board members should be elected, not appointed. That's something I guess a charter could require that. So we can leave that one in. And my, I edited your item B. Is that still acceptable? I did a little bit more research on that. But if it's an acceptable thing to consider, I'd like to consider it. Yeah, I think that's pretty much the question we had in item number okay. 2C. Um, one thing I would know, I just wanted to be clear in. Uh, Item, item 4A about the uh, public access officer. Just keep in mind that the PAO is required statutorily, but the only thing that um, that individual is responsible for, is responsible for is overseeing um, formal FOIA or FOA freedom of access requests. So if Joe Public went in and said, I want a copy of the town minutes for the last 10 meetings or something, it would be referred to the proper staff person. It wouldn't go to the PAO. So I just wanted to be sure that everyone understood that the PAO 
would not solve all the requests for well, information. A public, a member of the public need not use a specified form to make a request. They need not adhere to some form given to them by, or some, some format given by the any government. They, they may to, ask in any format they like. But they need to make it clear they're asking under the Freedom of Access Act. No, I don't think they do. I think they only have to do that. Uh, they do have to be clear about no, what they're asking for. Um, no, no. no. There's like a form and no 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 you're not required to use the form. You don't have to use the law. form, but no. also if you want information under that you have to respond to, that you have to get a response for, you've got to do it through right. those. I have not seen that in the law. I could be mistaken, but I have not read that in the law. I think you do. Yeah, you don't there's a particular form you have to say I'm asking this pursuant to the FOAA yes. so that we well, know that it's <laughs> what standards are being applied. For, for right, instance, there are different things that, that for, for, for instance, I've been forward way too many times from the being on the school board. <laughs> I've since submitted way too many photos. I enjoy the Freedom of Access Act. I believe you're absolutely right. The public has a right to access information. That said, if generic constituent X wants to know which email I sent, I have a right to say no until they follow it. And then at that point, there could be a certain circumstance where it gets adjudicated by the lawyer because there are documents and personnel related things out there that definitely can't get released by FOA. There are certain police records, correct me if I'm wrong, Mark, that you can obtain through FOA, but also can be redacted and have different pieces to it. And so you do have to make clear that you're requesting X, Y, Z. That said, if you reach out and ask an email that I send, I'm probably going to send it on anyway, because I know you're going to go the next step to the FOA. But to under the confines of that law, you do need to make clear that you're requesting it under the confines of the FOAA or however you word it, though. Really, the way I might say it might be a little different than you, but the recipient has to understand you're asking for it under that access. I perhaps have missed one provision of that law under state ordinances, and I have not seen that. Um, it's, um, I do recall that it said that there was no specified form. You don't you don't have to use a particular form or anything. But, um, but I, I may have missed something. I haven't probably read the whole thing in as much it, detail as some other it, people. It's have just that. Have, you but just in have any to event. make people aware that I guess I just wanted to be sure that the understanding was that that person had a very specific job duty as opposed to just answering every question that the public might i i think the general thing to speak in the general i think the general idea is that if we are going to have a town meeting which we you know kind of decided to do then every citizen is a governor we are the decision makers, or so I've been told. A legislator. If I'm a legislator, or maybe is that different from a decision maker? Okay. Different than a governor. Okay. Well, I'm happy to adopt your language. If I am a legislator, if I am the decision maker, then I need information to make a good decision. And I think Topton, like every other town, ought to focus on being sure to try to provide information as much as possible you know, to people who request it whether formally or informally, whether on a full request or otherwise. And I think that actually the staff are taking steps to try to do that, to really to really work on that. And I think it's a valuable thing. But spoken in the general, it's just because we have a town meeting form of government, providing information to the public is very important and we'd like everybody to pay attention to this. That's sort of the general. And that's kind of the idea here. I can make it very specific. I can make it very general, but that's the idea. Information needs to flow from the town outward when requested, as much as possible, within reason and within the limits of the law. You know, that's that's the point. Right, and I, again, I just wanted to be sure that a public access officer wasn't going to necessarily solve all of the issues that you want solved by having a point of contact. Did you um, have a different or additional idea? Would you like to suggest an additional thought? Um, I, you I'm can, wide open. <laughs> you know, you, you, you can, for the, 
I think it's more of a procedural thing, really, but, um, but you know, I think it's up to staff just to make sure that their department heads are very responsive to these questions. It's, yeah. it's more of a cultural. I it's agree. A, it's, a, it's a cultural attitude of the workplace. And I think you, hopefully <clears throat> you've seen a change in that. Okay. Well, I think the current staff are actually taking excellent steps in that direction. My understanding, I don't know if it's up there yet, but my understanding is that they're developing a web form that you can just put your request in there that goes to several people to, so that if one person is out, the request would still be responded to because somebody else could respond to it. That's all absolutely in the right direction. That sounds terrific. And that I'm is sure a process, not up there yet. But it's yeah, there. yeah. And I mean, that's a terrific step in the right direction. That's just a really good thing. Yeah. So yeah, so it isn't just one more. And the, the overall is information ideally should flow out. If the citizens are the legislators, if you accept that term, then they need information. And that's the that's the general statement. Mark, I will clean this up a little bit and get you revised. I'll go to the races tomorrow. Do we have anything else on that? Anyone? Um, and the two lists, um, you want to tackle that? The second list? Just, yeah, just Look kind of, of highlighting those things sure. for us at the next meeting or something. That would be awesome. All right. So at the next meeting, we would mm -hmm. review whatever Mark has for us. Um, and then I thought we also need to figure out how we want to present things for public comment. I have some thoughts on that. And I know you had wanted to break it down into topic <clears throat> nights, but I think that what we're doing has changed a bit since we took public comment before. For example, most of the discussion in the last meeting was about town meeting versus town council, where I think now if we just said, do you have ideas to improve the current form of government? Just have, instead of multiple meetings, one meeting with a list of our topics we've considered, and then public comment on those topics plus any new ideas since we it's been a little bit depoliticized since we last took the comments right and, and, and I, also I, well, okay. just one more. I just thought that department head and boards and committee comments might be elevated to a little bit more important at this point okay that is not necessarily I couldn't hear the last part of Marilyn's sentence. Can you repeat that, Marilyn? I was just saying that at this stage in the game that, you know, still taking in input from people that input from department heads and boards and committees might be something we look to solicit at this point. Mm -hmm. um, after we uh, check with the lawyer about what needs to be in a charter, Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I, I just, that's an excellent point. That's the kind of input, you know, that that we need as well. Um, the only reason I had thought of breaking it down was because you've got, you know, first you get some questions about the town meeting. And then you get some questions about the select board and about boards and committees. Right. And I was thinking maybe rather than just say, do you have any ideas, we could get some specifics on some of these things only because it will help us figure out how to implement them should that be the case. Maybe. Just, the just concern. to me, it feels like it's a lot of times to ask people to come out. Well, but that's where- I was just gonna suggest, what if you just do the one meeting, but instead of asking the general question, you just move from topic to topic. And you just have it to two hour meeting and it's just topic to topic. And People get up four times if they choose to, or they sit there and listen. 
We can go from topic to topic. Hey, got my and ask if they have any other ideas. Yes, Ed. Is that Ed? No, it's muted itself. I just, I, I said I agree. That's all. All right. No. I so you might want to allow for a second meeting because I don't know how much time it would take. Maybe none or maybe a lot. I have no idea. So, but that sounds reasonable to start with the first topic and then go to the next topic and then maybe cut the meeting off at two hours and consider them another one if we don't get to the end. Okay, we will um, we'll have to come once we get the information from Mark, then we'll have to come up with some language for the actual questions because I just wrote down the basic essence of them. Right, we can just first review the legal stuff of that. Yes, exactly. Worry about that. Um, I was thinking that I know surveys can be tricky, but if we have specific things for people, how important do you think <coughs> this is, or do you think this is important? And we give them specific things, and then a place is bottom for what other things do you think that might improve? Operation. I just, I think survey somehow, and it doesn't have to be massive, but it just shows that we really tried to get as much input as we possibly can. Yeah, I like the idea. Do we know if we're getting any input yet? So, um, we interviewed four of them today, <laughs> so we're not sure if one or. Uh, I can pretty easily build a survey if the group designs the questions. I can build a survey on Survey Monkey without too much difficulty. That's great. Well, what, what we'll do is wait until we get Mark's info and then we'll develop our language and plans simultaneously, get you the survey stuff and schedule. And I do think that someone will have to distribute it via email. Um, so the town list, I don't know how many people are on that, but. Um, we could also maybe put this link to the survey in um, in, a, in a public service announcement of some kind. Um, On the prior page. Yeah, something like that. I, I also think that it's very important that if we're going to open the Pandora's box of surveys that we do have ways that citizens can participate not online. In this climate in particular, there are a lot of senior citizens, a lot of folks that can't afford high-speed regular mm -hmm. internet. And I feel like if we're trying to get a diverse cross-section, we want to make sure that our seniors, our folks that don't have that internet access, that's something that at the school board level, I found that we rely too often on the technology side. And ultimately, we end up missing out on a sizable population that I think may have a lot of good ideas of what we could do better or not. I like that Ed has talked about in the past, you know, having some stuff at the solid waste facility. I think here at the tax clerk counter, we could have copies, paper copies where folks could take them if they want. Mm -hmm. I don't want to force people to offer their feedback, just like I don't want to force people to go to town meeting. Right. Equally, I want to make sure that if people want to participate, we don't end up with a technological barrier. The survey monkey's great, but Sometimes the old fashioned pen and paper is just as good. Too. I think we do both. Yes. I think we do as much as we can. And we, you know, we just try to get the word out. I think that we're at the, that point now where we're going to have some hard decisions. And this is legal answers. And then the public comments are going to be what's going to really get us to the need of are we going to move forward or how are we going to move forward or whatever? When do we think we'll be reaching the point of that kind of decision? Okay. Um, next meeting, Mark um, said that we can't meet on the 16th. So the 16th, the Select Board and Finance Committee are having a joint okay. meeting in this room. The 23rd, Wednesday, the 23rd, the 23rd. Um, can, can I? Um, say something yeah. in response to Tyler. Tyler, I totally agree with you that for some older folks, 
in the community, particularly the written survey is a great idea. The only trouble with it is that someone will have to take the written surveys and input that data somewhere or at least collate it um, in order for us to understand what the responses are and then combine yeah. that with the data from the online survey. I, I, it can be done, but it's just a certain amount of work that this committee needs to recognize. And I'm not sure I want to take on all the work of both writing the survey, manipulating uh, survey monkey so that it will give us the data at the end and collating and taking care of written surveys. So I'm just waking up for a human turn. <laughs> well, and, and I, I just want to make clear, Denise, I definitely recognize the work that goes into it. I think that if we're going to go the route of a survey, though, to make sure we've checked that box before we decide on direction, we got to put in that work one way or the other. Otherwise, I don't think we do a survey because, again, we're missing out on a large cross section. And I would like at some point to know, and so the public can know at what point we're going to kind of, whether it's going to be in April, whether it's May, when we're finally going to have the discussion. I think clearly it's going to be after we get that review from the, from the attorney. But if we're going to go the survey, I want to make sure we do it right. And if we're not going to do it right, I don't think we should do it. And I think that you're absolutely right. There is work that goes to it. And I think that the public could then know that we definitely left no stones unturned as we have one attendee in the audience right now tonight. So I don't think there's a huge burgeoning interest tonight, but I digress. Well, I think that um, we certainly don't want to do it incorrectly. Uh, so I have no doubts that we'll come up with a way that this gets it out there and gets it done. I can, I, can I ask a question, uh, Denise? Sure. Uh, Denise, I did you notice that on the question and answer, someone uh, asked, said that, that your survey monkey can't limit it to just Thompson residents? Is that true? Um, it, it's, well, no one can take the survey unless you send them the link. So if we only send the link to Topsom residents, then only Topsom residents can answer the survey. I guess people could hack into it, but um, that hasn't been my experience when I've worked with other nonprofits using SurveyMonkey. Um, we just had responses to the link. Sure, you could you could forward the link, um, sir. That is correct. Uh, but why? What what would your purpose be in doing that? And if you write at the top of the survey that the survey is for top some residents, I mean, I, I'm just not suspicious enough of people to believe that somebody would screw up our survey by um, sharing the link with people who have no interest in filling out a survey for Topsom residents. And you ask them like you do when they come to make a public comment, your name and your address, or just your address, something. You can't. I mean, they've had problems with the school board, right? The sending up, doing surveys and yeah. them getting responses. From, they get shared on, oh, the web, on the web and, you know. Huh. So um, if you require the name and address, then you <laughs> So if you do a, a Google survey, you can limit it to one response per person if, if you give their name and address, which I think is how, is that how the community center survey went out? We contemplated doing it that way. Um, okay, I, I don't, remember think, I don't think we ended that. up limiting the response, but yeah. I mean, you're right, it does have that ability. Yeah, the school board so, got a mass survey that people filled out multiple times. and But they did another one, I believe, and, that and they, they only did. fill out once. Right, for and they, they fixed it somehow. But do we actually have people's email addresses? And right. Only well, if they have signed have up on the website. Yeah. 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 But, but, I mean, what's yeah. about to happen is by the end of the month, we're going to have another upgrade to our website, and it's going to have an ability for people to sign themselves up for various lists. Um, but one of the things they were cautioning us from the company that hosts the website is that you don't want to send people things for lists they didn't sign up for because then both the company we get the website from that we can be like put on the blacklist for spamming. Um, so we 
I'd say probably the best way to spread the word about the survey would be things like um, the crier or put it on the web page, or we put it in some of our Facebook things that we send out. I think we do all but I don't think we necessarily want to, if someone just signed up for planning board notices, I don't think we necessarily want to send them the survey thing. We could be. Well, I think Marilyn is correct though, that some of the survey forms, and I haven't used Google um, surveys, but I'm sure I could figure it out, um, will allow you to have individual links. Um, and that's, I mean, that's something to think about. You know, it is interesting too. I mean, when people come to speak, we do require their name and their address. And maybe that's not unreasonable. I mean, the, the reason not to require that is that people might not speak as freely. But if they come to make a public comment, that's required, you know, routinely. And so maybe, you know, that would be another thing, just require their name and address. And, or ask them to check a box that they are a registered Topsom voter. And if, and if they, you know, if they're lying, then, you know, there's not much we can do about that. But um, I don't think that when something is shared on the internet, people go to the trouble to lie and check a box that says that they're a Topsom resident if they're not. I, I guess I'm just a person with more faith in people than that. Well, and I, I want to make clear that it's not that I don't have faith in you. I just want to also be very careful with the words we use, because if we say voter, there are hundreds of people in this town who aren't voters that have, some of them never voted, but I see registered their car here at town hall. Those are people that I want to hear from as well and equally. But they can't think, vote at town meeting. They don't vote at town meeting, so they, I mean. But they still should have a say in their form of government. And so I just think that- We're not we're discussing this, their form of government. Isn't that what the point of the survey is? To talk about no. how we can improve- how we can, it can, how we can improve communications, how we can improve participation, how we can improve government itself through a charter. It's not- to change the, in any way, shape, or form. And I'm not saying change the form of government. Maybe I just misspoke a little bit, but my point is, if somebody lives in this town, could potentially be the oldest citizen in town who never voted in the history of being here because it's not something they wanted to do, I still think that person who's been here forever has a right to weigh in if they live here in town. So I think the word residence important versus voter. That was my only, my only point. I, yeah, okay. I don't know if I necessarily agree with you because they can't contribute a town meeting under the current system that we have either. But um, but I hear your point, Tyler. Okay. Well, these are things we can iron out, uh, you know, be thinking about. Um, yeah, they, they could always go to town meeting, register to vote at the town meeting, yeah, right. get a slip and go in and vote. And they still do now. Paying taxes if they're a resident. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, they so they may not be paying taxes. Yeah. They may not own property. They might be renting. But I know people who are renters are going to argue the point that their rent is paid with the assumption, you know, with because their, their landlord, landlord is paying, paying taxes. taxes. Yeah, and they could also make the point that they're paying sales taxes because they may shop in town, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so the next meeting, we couldn't do, you couldn't do the 23rd? I can't do the 23rd, no. Uh, but, I mean, that doesn't mean, uh, I just looked at the calendar and I said, oh, the 3rd is the 16th. Oh, good thing it's not the 23rd. Mm. Yeah, oh, dear. But that, I mean, don't. No, I'm going to be the figure out. There, what kind of time frame do you want us to give you? Um, I think I could probably get it done by the 23rd. I, probably before, which before that would be hard, I think. So I was thinking that um, we could just have a couple of us come in for that and then do it by Zoom. But Mark has to be at the budget presentation. So we just bumped it a week and did the 30th? Give him a little extra time? I'm looking at the time calendar now. There, it looks like there was nothing scheduled for the 30th that night. Is but then we have a meeting on the next one. Yeah. 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 Y
But wasn't there a con conflict on the 6th of March? Oh, sorry, 6th of uh, Doesn't look like it. 6th of April looks like it's good. All right, try it from the 3rd then. What are we trying for here? 30. The 30th? So we. Am I right? 30th? Yes, 30th okay. is a Wednesday. Does that work for you, um, Ed and Denise? At this time, it works for me. Yeah, sure, so you're doing the 30th and the 6th? Yeah, yes, I could do the 30th. This is I, I'm not sure about the 6th yet. All right. So okay. just so I make sure to get things on the calendar so that we're first. Um, so we'd like to do the 30th, the 6th, and then the 6th and the 20th of April. Is that right? Yeah, 1st and 3rd is what we, 1st okay. and 3rd, yeah. yeah. We had an attendee for a little while, but I sent him a message. One of you wanted to speak because he missed our public comment thing, and then he left the meeting. <laughs> so I guess not. Oh, dear. Okay. That link is kind of hard to find. You have to go to the calendar, yep. and click on it. But if you go to like the Charter Commission, there's nothing. If you go to the, um, there's another piece on the town website that says uh, um, live meetings. Yeah. You go to that, it just gives you the meetings that have already happened. So finding this meeting is kind of kind of we, hard. We actually had that discussion well, with the staff to try, to try to standardize more how we're doing yeah. stuff. Um, yeah. And what we're thinking, maybe we maybe just take the live meetings off altogether. That was something left like early in COVID was put on, but then just leave it the calendar and that will be the place to find the link. It seems like that's probably the easiest. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Way, so. I'm, I'm so sorry to read that here. I, we're doing March 30th and April 4th. Is that correct? No, April 6th. It's the first and the third Wednesday. And then my wife didn't sign on because we wanted her email address and all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. You can always write no at no.com and it works. No at no.com? <laughs> yes. All right. I got that one <laughs> does she have to use a real name, Kim? No. <laughs> She's got a comment, she does. <laughs> All right. Anyone have anything else for the team? I think we covered quite a bit. Thank you all. Thank you, Mark. Welcome. Thank you. Would you like a motion to adjourn? Oh, yeah, sure. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Seconds. Good night, Denise and Ed. Good night. Unanimous acclamation.